is Thursday, March 21st. This is Jaguar's Happy Hour. Jaguar's Happy Hour is presented by the St. John's River Water Management District. And now, mother of Maximus, dog of the week, and she's got the hardware to prove it. TV's Kainane Stevens. You guys just butter me up every time with these. JP gets the mean ones, but I get the nice ones. So whenever you bring up my dog, I'm very happy to hear that. Um, Kainani Stevens filling in for JP. Once again, Jeff Logman is back with us this week. And we're dog lovers all around. So we, yeah. love, we love the mentions Yeah, we both there. are. Um, it's been a busy week. Jeff, you haven't been here for a little bit. So free agency, a lot has been going on while you've been gone. A lot of fresh faces. Um, when you were kind of seeing all these moves go down, what were your thought process? Because last year they didn't do a lot of free agent signing. No, but I figured that they would be active. And, um, of course, even though I wasn't here, you, you always follow it. Because, I mean, literally you step away from your phone, which is our source for news nowadays. When you step away from your phone for an hour, you miss a whole bunch of stories. So uh, I was keeping up with my phone, especially with the start of free agency, pretty much nonstop throughout the day. You know, probably a little annoying at times you're, you know, at spring break with the family and you're checking your phone to see what's going on. But, uh, but I thought it was very impressive. The thing that impressed me the most is I've always been a big fan that free agency should be an opportunity to plug holes Mm -hmm. and not necessarily necessarily to plug holes with high priced free agents, but to plug holes with good players, some expensive, some not, so that when you go into the draft, you can address the draft in not a needs way, but in a best available players way. Because I think that's the only way that you survive in the National Football League year after year. So many moving parts. Um, welcome into Jaguars Happy Hour here, brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving. Kai Stevens here with Jeff Lagerman. Jeff, we were just talking about this big you know, free agency class. Um, they also were kind of adding... they. They added via trade to their back of quarterback, obviously. And then signing Mitch Morse before free agency started, we've been talking about this offensive line for months now at this point. Obviously, the back end of last season, that was a huge problem. Does kind of shoring up this center, which was an issue, does that hearten you a little bit that they're taking it seriously? Well, I, I remember me and JP had this conversation, and, and JP w- was kind of of the mind that, hey, we got to you got to upgrade that. And, I, and my whole point was that, look – you can call it that, but I like to refer to it as competition. You can bring in more competition because it's not uh, the. It would be wrong to assume that Luke Fortner can't compete for the starting job, but to bring somebody in to compete with him, and I thought Mitch Moore signing, I think it was very good. There's a little history there because Doug Peterson spent a year with him in Kansas City when he was, I think, a fourth round draft pick for the Kansas City Chiefs way back when. Um, he's a good football player. He is uh, much better, I think, in pass protection than he is in run blocking. But to create competition with signings in some situations to, I don't want to say shore up a weakness, but to get better, I think is a better way to put it, is a great thing. Um, I love that signing. Um, I think it's cost affordable. The money's not crazy. And with Eric Armstead, it's a little different. Money goes up a little bit, but you're talking – Uh, a premier player at a premium position. And so the cost goes up a little bit. Yes. I like when you bring up competing because I think a lot of the issues, I mean, people were, you know, maybe mad a little bit. They kind of ran it back if you want to say it last year, but you have to have that competition because if you don't have someone kind of behind you pushing you, you're may not get the best out of some people. Some people aren't built that way, right? They need that kind of, Oh, someone's behind me kind of push them along. Yes. They're professional athletes. You should be motivated on your own. There's plenty of other reasons, but sometimes you need that friendly competition in camp. Like, Hey, I need to go in or someone's going to take my job. You know, there's a, there's a saying out there and I hate it. Iron sharpens iron. Oh, I hate Trent Valky loves Iron Sharp. I know, and I hate, I hate it. I was like, wait a minute. I said, look, uh, great players make make other players better, you know, and, and competition makes everybody better, mm-hmm. I think is an easier way to put it. And so even like an Eric Armstead, I mean, he's going to come in, he's going to come in, and he's going to come in and compete. I mean, clearly he's going to have a step above the rest because he's a proven player and he's been a proven player for a long period of time. But the mm-hmm. one thing that he has to do, he's got to be able to – compete with himself to get healthy because Mm -hmm. from what I understand, he's going to be having an off season surgery and to get back to the form that where if you look at him a couple years ago and he was a double digit sack guy, and I'm not saying he's got to be a double digit sack guy, but his availability obviously is a big thing. You want to make sure that he's available so that he can play for you and have the impact that he's had in the past for the 49ers. 
We're going to hear from Eric Armstead a little bit later on in the show. He was great kind of in the press conference, what we've heard from him so far. He brings in an interesting aspect I've talked about, just kind of that that leadership. A lot of these free agents are from winning franchises and franchises that have s- sustained that, you know, playoffs every season. You know, if it's a San Francisco, Buffalo, the Ravens, they understand what that's going to take in the day-to-day basis. And I think sometimes bringing in a veteran presence like that to have someone to look forward to, like, hey, this is what we need to do every week if we want to continue and make the playoffs. Well, and quality people. Yes, of course. I think that's a, a big to component. To set that standard. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that I give Trent Baalke credit for. And you can debate some of his draft picks, but the one thing I think that you can't debate with Trent and what Doug has done, uh, what they've done together, is the quality of people that they brought in have – that's been something that they're not going to you know soften up on at all. Uh, they believe that that works, and I believe it does too. And, and Eric Armstead is a perfect example. I mean, you talk about a high-quality guy, absolutely high-character guy. I mean, that's exactly what you want on top of the leadership thing. So th- those were positives. And, uh, you know, but the beginning line to okay, qualification, is he a good player or not? I yes. mean, because they, they got to fill that one. category first, and then you want to make sure that they have the other qual- qualities as well. And from the looks of it, it seemed like all of these guys have that or those qualities. And do you want to touch on someone that's not here? We were talking about it, you know, for weeks. Calvin Ridley seemed like, you know, maybe he's coming back. Obviously, they wanted to wait until free agency so they didn't lose that second round pick. And they didn't, but they ended up kind of losing their guy. Do you feel like this was an opportunity that maybe the Jaguars messed up with? Or was it just kind of the Titans came in out of nowhere with a bag of money? They did not mess up. I'm going to stay true to what I said a while ago. And me and JP had this conversation. I've been asked many times by di- different fans uh, around the city, and they've asked me, what do you think about Calvin Ridley? I said, I like him. I like him. They're like, you know, should we tag him? We want to keep him, right? I'm like, no. No, I mean, first of all, if you tag, now you're giving up a higher draft pick, number one. And number two, you're committing a lot of money to what may be only one year. Now, what sense does that make, to give a third-round pick for what may end up being one year of service? And the cost of the money – I don't forget what happened during the course of the year with Calvin Ridley. There were times where the quarterback and him were not on the same page, that uh, Calvin didn't seem to have awareness on certain plays. And I'm not saying that he was a bad player. I think he's a good player. I think in year two he would have been even better. But everything wasn't great Mm -hmm. last year. So let's not act like that this was Christian Kirk of two years ago, you know, because that's not the case. And the amount of money that the Tennessee Titans paid – you can't compete with that. I mean, if somebody wants to pay him that, then Take more him. power to him. But not you. I mean, you can't commit that kind of money or resources to that because you've got other holes that need to be filled on your football team. And the other thing that this team needs to do, they need to draft and develop wide receivers. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But here's the other thing. Gabe Davis is a really good football player. Sure is. Um, last time I checked, he was averaging 17 yards a catch the last two years. And he's a big guy. Uh, he uh, he's not a burner, but he's a guy that I think that uses his size very well. He's very smart, and when you average 17 yards a catch, you're doing something right. And so I'm a big fan of that signing. And a lot of people may kind of push it off and say, "Well, it's not Calvin Ridley." Wait a minute, Gabe Davis. If you look at his numbers from a production standpoint, I think he's averaging like seven touchdowns a year. He's giving you 17 yards a catch. He's six foot two, two 225 pounds. He's a good football player. And he'll fit, I think, into this offense very well. So I think the Jaguars did a very good job with, with the signing of Gabe Davis. We've been talking a little bit about it on Jagzam. John Osier and I have talked a little bit about, you know, maybe two years ago when Trevor had um, – a little bit more of you didn't necessarily have a, a receiver you felt you had to feed all the time like maybe Calvin where if you're not giving him a certain amount of balls he might not be into the game as much. I think much. we saw some of that last year. You could spread the ball around a little bit more when they had Marvin Jones Jr. and is that kind of maybe a dynamic they might move forward with now with where they have kind of Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk again, you know Zay if he's healthy and Evan Ingram where they'll spread the ball a little bit around instead of having to feed one person. Well if you got Justin Jefferson, you feed him the ball. Sure. No one's okay. going to say that, of course. There yeah, are, there I mean, are so, exceptions to the rule. So it's all dependent upon what, what the talent level of your players are telling you, you should you, how you should utilize them. Mm-hmm. Calvin Ridley, to me, wasn't a player that you should force him the ball because he he's that kind of a player. I think he's a really good player, but not the kind of player to the level of a Justin Jefferson where you feed him. 
But I think that there were times that they felt like that they had to feed him the ball to keep him involved and to keep his attention throughout a, a, the course of a game. And that, that's not what you want. Yeah. You, you, you want to let things happen organically in the system. And that's the way Doug Peterson's offenses have always worked. And, and again, you, you, you don't go into it saying, okay, you know what, we don't need the guy. When you have a guy and he turns out to be that guy and he commands that, then you give it to him. But right now you don't have that. And until you do, you run the offense. Where do you look at in terms of everyone says this is a, you know, a deep wide receiver draft. We'll have a couple more weeks to go into every single particular person they might be looking at. But is that going to be one of the higher picks? Does it have to be wide receiver? There's other needs on this team, and some of those are harder to draft later on in the draft. So do you, you maybe go cornerback early? Where are you kind of looking at in terms of the wide receiver group? Are they going to establish a lot of draft picks to that, or is it going to be a higher pick? It's, I think it's a great question. And – I'm going to go back to to what I kind of said a little bit ago, and because I think that's the answer for for everything when it comes to the draft, take the best player. And if it's a wide receiver, then you take it a, a wide receiver. If it's a defensive tackle, even though you drafted Eric Armstead, okay, then you draft the best defensive tackle if he's the best player. It's the greatest chance of continuing the lifeline of a franchise in the future is by drafting the best player, not somebody who well he's going to plug a hole here. Now, could defensive back, you know, is that going to be something that's going to be addressed? Sure, it is because you draft corners every year, and you should because that's one of the most uh, – if you look at it from a number standpoint, defensive back, I mean, there's there's five guys on the field for the most part, sometimes six on your defensive side of the ball. So it's a position of importance just because of a number standpoint. Uh, wide receiver is also a position of importance from a number standpoint because this offense runs three wide receivers all the time, sometimes four. So you need to have those two positions. But, again, I'm not a big fan of saying, well, you know, you take the wide receiver in two and then the corner in three. I will say this. Um, in the league today, the corner position and the wide receiver position have become more premium positions than they have been in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, typically the big guys are always kind of up there with the quarterbacks. Uh, but because it's such a passing-oriented league now, it's become even more important to get those two positions. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what their mindset is. I mean, with the the release uh, or the weakness that they have at defensive back, and they did si have a, a signing in free agency uh, that is up because uh, – uh, what's his name? Williams left. Um, Darius. Away. Darius Williams. Uh, and that was surprising to me. But then you sign a guy in free agency, again, you plug that hole, so now you can draft best available player. So it'll be interesting to see what their mindset is. And I haven't jumped into the draft deep enough yet to know, but from what I understand, there's a lot of wide receivers and mm -hmm. a lot of corners. So you should be able to get what you want in different places. We say that, but identifying and getting the talent is always is always difficult. Because before the draft, we think we have everything planned out, but well, the draft you know never and, goes the way we think it's going to go. And it, the reality is, it's a it's a numbers game, yeah. you know, a percentages game, whatever you want to call it. The draft you you typically have less than a fifty percent chance of hitting on a pick. I mean, just look at it. I mean, it's, and and this organization has not drafted very well in its history. Uh, even going from the first round, which you know your percentages should be higher in the first round. And so the organization needs to do a better job of drafting so that the lifeblood, the supply of talent continues to roll in to supplement this football team year after year. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what, what they do with the draft. You know, hopefully this year also from a production standpoint, because last year's draft class didn't get a whole lot out of, hopefully there's more out of that this year and year two. And I think that's going to definitely be part of the plan, right? Because of some of those players that we drafted last year, you need to see them on the field more because we just don't know what's there right now, right? Whether it's Tank Bigsby or, you know, Brenton Strange, a lot of them we didn't see enough of to really know. So I know that's predicated by whatever's happening on the field, whether you can actually give them the ball or not, obviously. Yeah, see, I like Strange. I mean, I, I think Strange showed me enough that the the one issue that I would have with Strange is that they didn't really use him in a role that justified him being picked in the second round. You know, because they kind of used him as a, a fullback blocking tight uh, blocking tight end, and it, it wasn't he wasn't really a big part of the passing attack. Well, if that's kind of was your role for him, then that's not really where you draft that that at. And uh, but I think that there will be an expanded role 
for him going forward. I hope so. And I hope Tank Bigsby, Bigsby gains confidence and, because what we saw in training camp last year, and, and not just me, but the coaches and all of his teammates were very excited about his production. And then things didn't happen very, very good at the beginning of the year. And I think the confidence from him and then also from the coaching staff waned. And then it's hard to kind of get back up in, once you kind of get in a so-called slump. And running back's one of those positions you need the ball, right, to be able to do something. So he wasn't getting a ton of carries either. He, well, yeah, I mean, also, but, you know. Got to earn it. I get it. It's a, it's it's tough. I, it, it's one of those things where, okay, you hand him the ball a few times, then you want to see some production when you give it to him a few times. And if you looked at last year, they handed it to him a few times, and there were some plays that didn't go so well. So now the coach's confidence wanes a little bit. And then all of a sudden, the opportunities start to drop. And then when he has the opportunities in the future, then I think you could kind of see that he was pressing because he wanted to make up for maybe the mistakes that he made or didn't want to mess up. And then so when you get in that situation, I don't think it's good for anybody. And I think he'll be better in year two because, I mean, look, he's been a good football player before. And good football players just don't all of a sudden just lose it. Yeah. And he's played, you know, he was at Auburn. There was tough situations there. He never transferred out. He stayed there, battled through. He's got the mentality for it. So I'm hoping to see the same thing, he'll, too. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. But I'm looking forward to seeing what his production is this year. And in uh, Bretton Strange, I want to see I want to see him with a similar role, but also a different role. Because he's a really good blocker. But I want to see him get the ball at times because... At least see if he can. Like, he's, we got to know. He's got some talent. All right, we're here on Happy Hour presented by St. John's River Water Management District. Coming up after the break, we're going to hear from new defensive lineman Eric Armstead, what he has to say, what he thinks he brings to the mix here on Jaguars Happy Hour. What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. Looking for the best clearance deal of the year on trucks that deliver power, performance, and savings? Then it's time to say yes during Ford Truck Month. Yes to limited time savings on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s. And yes to the number one selling trucks 47 years straight, Ford F-Series. Find all your yeses at the clearance sale during Ford Truck Month, only at your local Ford dealer. Based on 1977 through 2023 CY industry reported sales. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Don't get sacked by a no-name propane rookie Jacksonville. Draft an all-star and switch to Amerigas, the official propane provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the homes and businesses who know it was always the Jags. Show off your Duval pride at your next tailgate with a Jaguars grill tank from Amerigas. To find an Amerigas exchange location near you or to order a propane fill-up for your home or business, visit Amerigas.com slash Jacksonville dash Jaguars or call 844-PRO-JAGS. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. As the official supermarket of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Publix is helping fans gear up for game day with the limited time Jaguar sub. Piled high with hot deli chicken tenders, boar's head bacon, cheddar cheese, coleslaw, and barbecue mayonnaise on a white sub roll. The Jaguar Sub is an easy, delicious meal for any fan. Make it an ultimate game day by ordering the Jaguar Sub online for in-store pickup. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. 
The Jags were a good team before me. And, you know, whenever I enter a situation, um, you know, not just football, but in life in general, when I'm meeting people, when I'm, um, you know, entering a situation, working with people, you know, I, I want to make the place better than, than when I found it. I want to make um, a positive impact. And so I think uh, this team was already a phenomenal team, and I think I can help um, get them to the next level. So uh, having an opportunity is something I look forward to as well. Welcome back to Jaguars Happy Hour. Kainani Stevens, Jeff Lagerman in. JP is off today. Um, we're brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water, it's worth saving. Eric Armstead, the newest addition to the defensive line, saying all the right things. Um, he does bring that veteran presence. We talked a little bit about battling through that injury, but um, if he is healthy and when he returns, he's healthy, that could be something to kind of see what he's able to do on that line we talked about needing more depth and and just stronger bigger guys on both sides of the line yeah that, that I thought was the most important thing for this team in the offseason was addressing the trenches and offensive line defensive line especially at the tackle position and then depth at the edges there uh, Eric Armstead is big long and strong he reminds me a lot of Calais Campbell in some respects just because he's just so so long mm-hmm and he's a, a really good football player that's athletic on top of being big, long, and strong. But then he's got a great awareness to him and, and going to be doing some film room stuff with him coming up. And from watching the film, he does some things that he is really smart and aware of certain situations, and he anticipates things. And that's what you would expect out of a nine-year player going into year 10. And so – if he can get healthy, I think he's going to be a really, really good acquisition for this football team. But it won't prohibit this football team from looking at defensive tackles in the draft. Sure. Nor, or should it should not prohibit this team from looking at that position. It's a three-year um, deal that he's signed. So, as you mentioned, he's entering his 10th year. So, of course, they're what going to be What was the money? Like, I didn't see what the money was. I think was. it was – 50-ish? Yeah. We'll look that up. That's, um, that's probably about right. That's probably – it mean, sounds about a, right. For a player of his caliber, I mean, it's, sure. it, it, it's not cheap. And that's the intangibles you're bringing in, right? We're talking about someone that's been there, done that at a sustained level. Um, and also, let's hear a little bit. We're going to hear from Eric Armstead actually talked a little bit about what it means to him to kind of be playing with Josh and Trayvon on this team. Um, I think it's important, you know, especially being in a league this long, that uh, no one can do it on their own. Um, I've seen uh, a lot of situations where, um, you know, guys aren't, you know, you don't get the full uh, potential out of guys because, you know, they're not surrounded you know, with other great players as well, too. So I'm excited to, to you know, take the field with those guys and, um, you know, learn and learn this new defense together and, and uh, start that journey. We've seen Josh and Trayvon bounce off each other. They certainly help each other out there getting sacks or whatever it might be. Um, but having someone like Eric Armstead on the line has to benefit everybody else. Oh, he's – trust me, Josh and Trayvon are going to be thrilled. Um, Eric c comes from that. I mean, he came from having Bosa on the outside, so it's, that's not anything new for him having a talented player on the outside. Uh, but he, he's going to help those two guys on the outside a ton. And I just hope that the Jaguars are able to draft and develop somebody that can be groomed for that position in the future because that's, that's a premium position. It's hard to find three technique pass rushers that, that can do it year in and year out. I mean, even if you have, for example, if you have an, an, an edge rusher and he's getting 10 sacks a year, double digits, you're, you've got a really good player. For an interior pass rusher to get 10 sacks, that's considered great for an interior guy. And Armstead has been in that, you know, that five plus anywhere up to 10 in, in his career, which is really good and really consistent. But again, that's a, you got to have two on the inside, sure. and a lot of people are going to say, "Well, you know what? You can move Trayvon on the inside, and you can find a guy on the outside." Well, that you can do that if you find an edge guy to complement everybody else. But that's not Trayvon is a first and foremost. He's more of an edge player. He doesn't have the size to be on the inside down after down. A lot of people think that that's where he belongs naturally. And it kind of gets a little annoying hearing that because, I mean, Trayvon is an end-type yeah. player. Um, 
if he goes inside, then I think it's going to be in more of a pass rush type of situation. But he, that's not where he's going to make his living at. Are you excited to kind of see what Ryan Nielsen's going to do with this new roster he has on defense? Obviously, we know it's going to be a different scheme than what we've seen before, but what he's going to be able to do with these pieces. Yeah, the, the chess pieces are going to dictate what you can and can't do. And it, I hate to use players as chess pieces, but in the Cater grand scheme talents. of things, that's yeah. kind of what it is when you look at scheme. And so for for coaches, you want to find out what you have before you kind of determine what you do. You're going to have everything in the book because you're going to try to have some flexibility and be, be multiple, and that's a, a popular term among coaches nowadays. But I think Ryan's going to learn pretty quick what he has and what he doesn't have. One of the biggest things that dictate dictates your style is going to be your corner position. So, I mean, where are you going to be at? And so you got Darby, okay, to replace a guy, but, you know, are you going to draft a guy? Or are you going to do it high? You know, what what is your coverage situation going to be? Because we saw, for example, you look at the last couple years. In the last two years, the Jaguars' defense, they wanted to be more of a man-based defense, but they they learned quickly – that that was not the style that they could have success with. So the players dictate a lot of that. So I hope that they can get more talent in at that corner position to be able to play more man coverage because it will allow Ryan Nielsen to be more multiple and do a lot of different things because that's when defenses become dangerous is when they can do a lot a lot of things good because then you can disguise and look one way and play another way. And it's hard for offensive coordinators to really find a rhythm when you have a defense that can do a lot of different things and do it well. Jags fans, we want to invite you to join us on Tuesday, April 16th from 6.30 to 8.30 at Everbank Stadium for the Be Inspired by Jags Jobs event. That's presented by the Florida Lottery. You can register now at jaguars.com slash bright futures. Um, we talked a little bit about this already, but, you know, they cut Rayshon, they cut Darius, and then they kind of filled back in with Darby and Savage, but... Mm-hmm. DB has to be on the draft list, right? Obviously, you're going to see how the board falls, but you, I'd imagine you want to get some young talent in there and see what you got. Also, Antonio Johnson, we have to mention, we'll see more playing time from him and where they're going to use him. Yeah, the, the Rayshon thing, cutting him, totally understood that. I, I kind of predicted at the end of the year last year, once we kind of got a look at Antonio Johnson and his skill level, I said, well, I love Rayshon, and he was the hero, you know, t- what – not last year, but the year before that, you know, the Dallas game, the Tennessee game, he had two huge plays in those games, game winners. And you'd hate to have to say goodbye to a guy like that, but look, that's part of the business. And with the development of Antonio Johnson, I could kind of see that coming. Um, Didn't necessarily see the Darius Williams thing coming. I thought he had uh, arguably one of the best seasons of a corner in the league, probably in the top 10. And uh, but I understand it, you know, the cap ramifications. Darby's a guy that comes in, has got experience, costs a whole lot less. So, um, but I think you know, when we were, you were asking earlier about where do you think the Jaguars will use a pick to get a wide receiver and maybe a corner? I mean, the, I think the corner is going to be round one, round two, round three, it'll be somewhere near the top because once you get out of round one, two, or three the percentages of that player hitting, you know, and it's a percentages games always, yeah. but the percentages for that position are not very high. Not good odds. No. Um, you definitely got to go early if you want to get a DB for sure. If you want to get a good one. A good one, a talented one, which and, is what we want. <laughs> well, and, and look, you have Tyson Campbell right now, but Tyson Campbell is not coming off the best year. And he's going to be up for contract, him and Cisco next year. So these are kind of prove it years for them as well. Well, and, you know, the great thing about having players that are good, if if they end up having to walk, and the Baltimore Ravens have been the best in the league at that, is that they continue to replenish the roster with their draft, and then they allow certain players to walk. Then they, in return, get compensatory picks to be able to draft replacements. And so the the Ravens are one of the best at it. With Ozzie Newsome, and now Eric DaCosta, they're two of the best at that. And, you know, this organization is trying to get to that style to where they're constantly replenishing, you know, and Calvin Ridley is going to be a compensatory pick reward for this football team in 2025. And so sometimes you have to look at it from that perspective that even if we let certain players walk that are good, hey, what can we replace them with and what can we get in return by letting them walk? 
about halfway through here on Happy Hour. When we return, we're going to talk a little bit about the offense, the wide receiver room, that offensive line, all that more here on Jaguars Happy Hour. What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move in ready homes and step up your game. Jags fans, do you have a high schooler interested in a career in sports? High schoolers and one parent or guardian are invited to Everbank Stadium Tuesday, April 16th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. for a Be Inspired by Jags Jobs event presented by the Florida Lottery. Listen to a panel of Jaguars employees who receive bright future scholarships, plus meet a player, win prizes, and more. Space is limited, so visit jaguars.com slash bright futures to register. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, Florida. This is Luke Fortner, center for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We all know the rush of a good game, but there's no winning with aggressive driving on our roads. It's all about strategy and control. Embrace the space with the driver in front of you, go the speed limit, and use that blinker. These are the moves that make us all champions of the road. Target Zero is our game plan for safer roads and is a testament to our teamwork and dedication. Join me and let's get everyone home safely every single day. Don't make a bad call when it comes to servicing your home. Cooling off with a baby pool in the house to fix your air conditioning problem is a bad call. Trying to catch a wave in a flooded bathroom is a bad call. Using a burning electrical panel to make s'mores is a bad call. The next time something goes wrong, make a good call to Donovan. Whether you need air, electric, or plumbing service, Donovan is always a good call. It's why we've been trusted by our customers for almost 40 years and why you can trust us to deliver fast, reliable service to your home. Donovan, always a good call. Visit DonovanAC.com today. I'm very versatile and can, you know, play any type of game that needs to be played, whichever week, uh, any any other week, you know. So that I feel like that's what I bring. I was a 24-year-old captain at Buffalo. Um, I feel like I, I got good leadership skills, and um, I was voted back-to-back -back hardest worker there as well. Uh, that's what I try to, to to prove to my teammates that they can trust me because they see the sacrifice that I put in. Um, from my team and they see that you know I love this game and I don't take it for granted because it's brought me so much so I try to show the guys that you know when times are tough they can they, they can depend on me that's your new wide receiver Gabe Davis here on happy hour presented by the St. John's River Water Management District Florida's water it's worth saving Jeff I know you're a big fan of Gabe Davis love that guy what he's been able to do big play Gabe over there yeah, um love him he, I mean just listening to him right there I mean if you don't love that I mean there's everything there's something you wrong hear. with you sure you know, he does, doesn't take anything for granted how hard he works. And he's uh, – the impressive part is when they signed him, I remember looking at his numbers, and that's kind of the first thing you look at is, okay, let me see what he's done. And over the last couple of years, he's averaged about 17 yards a reception, averaged about seven touchdowns. He hasn't had a ton of balls. Um, but I think he's going to get more balls than he's gotten in the past here than he has gotten in Buffalo. And so my first thought was, and, and this also we're going to take a look at him in the film room coming up on Jaguar social media, 
is, okay, you see that 17 yards of catch, and your first reaction is, the guy must have great speed. So my first thing after looking at his numbers, I said, okay, well, if he's got 17 yards of catch, because I always knew he, they called him big play Gabe for a reason, so I kind of knew that he had a high yards per catch average. And so I said, okay, well, if he's not fast, how is he doing it? Because he only ran like four, five, five reportedly mm-hmm. coming out of college. So I start watching the film on him, and he does so many different subtle things. He's a great route runner. He's got great size, and he works his tail off. When he talks about working hard, scramble rule situation with Josh Allen, his quarterback at Buffalo, he, him and Josh had a nice thing going in scramble rules because he always worked to get open for his quarterback. And a lot of his big plays came from that situation. And then he used his size to create separation. Pass interference probably could have been called in a few situations, but he's very smart about it. And then the good ones are. So I love the signing. And if somebody had asked me straight up, would you take Gabe Davis or Calvin Ridley? I'm taking Gabe Davis. Is it just the separation? Is it those little intangibles that you feel like he's bringing that the team didn't have before that makes you say that? Calvin Ridley, in a lot of ways, to me, was like a Christian Kirk. Right? But wasn't used that way necessarily. Right. right. Yeah. And so, okay, we got a guy that moves like that, that's more of a slot player, which is what Calvin and Christian are. You don't need that two of those guys. I mean, if they're great, okay, that's fine. But I don't think Calvin Ridley is to the level of Christian Kirk for this offense at that position, in my opinion. But this offense, I think, needed somebody that was different. Um, Zay Jones was a, a very good double-move guy that could give this offense a little bit of a vertical element. Gabe Davis can provide that as well, and he only runs like a four five five, but he's also a big body. He's 6'2", 225 pounds. You know, there's a play that I'm going to show that he, he literally a scramble rule situation. He ends up finding an opening and then drags a linebacker 10 yards into the end zone. I mean, Calvin Ridley's not going to drag a linebacker into the end zone from 10 yards away. It's just not going to happen. So, I mean, I just – I love that signing. And, and also, I love it from the standpoint of it's not – what did Calvin get? It was like 50 million guaranteed. 50 guaranteed, 92 over. Yeah. A lot of money. 20-something a year. I mean, sure. it, it, you know, and here's the reality. And – if you're putting the team together, that has to be a factor in determining whether a guy is on your team or not. Because if it costs you more at that position, that means somewhere else you can't spend that money. It's a game, many parts to this game that you have to think about. And of course, money is the biggest factor with a lot of this stuff. Um, also on on offense, we should continue to kind of talk about some of these free agents. Devin DuVernay is going to be their new kick return guy, which means Agnew will most likely be moving on to a yeah, new home. Yeah, his contract has expired. So when you sign a guy like that, that means Agnew's it's time for him to move on. Literally, I just is this a carbon copy situation? They feel like it's a little bit of an upgrade? Just uh, I mean, I don't want to say an upgrade because, I mean, Jamal Agnew has been one of the best return guys in the league and provided this football team with a, a ton of sparks and a ton of big plays. But I, I think he's a, a really good player that has great returnability, but then also the ability to, to to have a role in the offense, probably more of an of a wide receiver role than what Jamal. Jamal's kind of what's the right word? He, he was kind of a, had a specialty role in the offense. Yeah, certain plays he was utilized right. or not. Right. So I think Duvernay is going to be a, a fun player. Another pick, by the way, that's going to give the Baltimore Ravens a compensatory pick. With Darby as Darby well. Darby too, both of those guys. You know, we're just actually Ravens. talking about that in the break, and I think the Baltimore Ravens are lined up with Patrick Queen and DuVernay and Darby to get a total of like four compensatory picks. That's where you want to get at some point. What do you make of the Mac Jones trade situation? I know it's – I think it's, it's – kind of... I think I love it. Here, here's a couple reasons why I love it. Uh, first and foremost, he's a Jacksonville kid. Okay, went to Bowles, okay – uh, ended up going to Alabama, which is not local, but he's a local guy. He had a tough couple years, and I think it will be good for Trevor. I think it will be good for the backup quarterback situation here in Jacksonville. And so you gave up a six-round pick for him, for Mac Jones. Okay, there's still a lot of teams around the league that still have and refer back to their college when he was coming out, the college evaluation of him. And so when, if he does become available to them, they're going to look back at that and say, yeah, we really had him rated highly. We had a, ground, let's say, a, a first-round grade on him or a second-round grade for the teams that didn't, oh, maybe weren't big believers in him. But let's say that 
Trevor gets hurt. Gets hurt. Now you've got a guy that has a heck of a lot of starting experience, and let's say he plays for four or five games. Okay, first of all, you want a backup quarterback to play well. If he plays well in that limited opportunity that he has, and he plays well, and now all of a sudden you're not looking at getting a six-round pick in return. You're looking at, number one, getting a compensatory pick, but then you're also looking at an opportunity of – tagging and trading a guy Mm -hmm. you know for example rob johnson years ago and this is back in the early jaguars history rob johnson played in the limited amount of games when mark brunell got hurt played very well they ended up trading rob johnson to the buffalo bills and they got the ninth overall pick in the draft which resulted in getting fred taylor pretty good return that did okay so the the six round pick is minimal for the risk that it could end up rewarding you with down the road as a, not, not only as, as him as a player for your organization, but also maybe something more as a possibility as well. You guys, I came from New England originally before I came, so I saw some of what Mac dealt with up there, and it was a tough situation. Obviously, you're coming in a year and a half after Tom Brady was there, so that's not great. And they didn't set him, they didn't set him up. They haven't been a good team for a while. They had a defensive coordinator as his offense coordinator. Yeah, what the hell were Which, they doing? So, I mean, part of it, Bill is Belichick, that? I mean, you wouldn't think that Bill Belichick would handle a situation like that. One of the greatest coaches of all time to have a defensive coach take over as offensive coordinator, to not have a declared offensive coordinator for a period of time, uh, wasn't the best handling of that situation at all. To me, that's the epitome of one of those where you have a rookie that is in a bad situation and then the confidence is gone and then there's just nothing you can do to get it back at that point. So I find it intriguing that I'm sure part of what Doug Peterson finds intriguing, having been a quarterback himself, is thinking, I can help with this situation. I'm sure he's he's got to be thinking that. Bring him into a better environment, a good quarterback room. Max not coming in to save the day. He, know he, he knows what he's coming in. He knows his role here. So that can only benefit him to be able to be like, hey, maybe I can come in if Trevor misses a game or two. The season's right. not automatically over, right? You're not petrified running him out there several weeks in a row where Trevor's been hurt playing on no practice time because you think you need him to play. If you have a serviceable, you know, backup Mac Jones that can win you a game or two, that changes the season. Well, and it, uh, CJ is going to compete. It's going to be know, a competition. Him, sure. Yeah. Uh, and d- d- did I ever tell you the, the story about the first time I ever saw Mac Jones play football? No. Is it high school or is this before that? High school. Okay. So uh, we were, uh, I was at the Bulls game. And sitting in the bleachers because my son was going to bowls, and I'm sitting next to a buddy of mine, Chris Kirby. And Chris and I are, you know, just sitting there watching a football game. We're chatting, you know, about different things. And all of a sudden, you see bowls start throwing the football. And I went, wow. (laughs) That kid can really throw the football. Which, you know, if you've watched bowls football for years under Corky Rogers, all they ever did was run the football. They didn't throw it. And all of a sudden, they had this kid throwing the ball. And I was like, the kid's pretty good. And Chris is like, oh, yeah, that's that, um, that Mac Jones kid. He's going to Alabama. I was like, wow, he's pretty good. Sure is. So that was the first time I ever saw him. And, uh, yeah, he was pretty good at that school now. All right, well, he's going to try to run it back, come home, get some of that home cooking, yeah. get that going again. Yeah, I mean, look, he's got, uh, he's got hometown fans behind him, and uh, he can get some home cooking. There you go. And, uh, and then regain the confidence and regain his swagger behind uh, the starter. But, you know, here's the other thing. Not wrong with a little bit of push. Yeah. You know, I mean, Keep look, everybody competitive. Everybody like we compete. said, we've seen last year alone, how many backups did we see out there? Like, yeah, and I'm not saying that Trevor's going to get some plan. No, or not like that. that. But like they are needed Help each at other points. and get yeah. better. Everybody gets better. Maybe he doesn't rush back and play on a Thursday game when he hurts his knee. You know, those kinds of things. Right. That could be helpful. Well, uh, because last year I felt like that at times that Trevor shouldn't maybe not have decided to play in some of those situations. And... Uh, maybe it wasn't the best thing in the world. I don't know. Yes, hindsight's twenty twenty. We look at it now, and it's like very close, but we understood it. So we'll see what if this changes th- this dynamic a little but bit. But you next go year. look at, and look at Max' rookie year. He was really good. I mean, he had a really good rookie year, and uh, and then it was kind of tough sledding after that. And again, so I think some of the mismanagement of the offensive side of the coaching staff by Belichick, and I'm not one to be quick to to criticize Bill Belichick because he's the greatest coach of all time, in my opinion, but I don't think he did a great job there. 
the offensive side of the ball was definitely an issue the last couple of years for Mac. Um, let's talk about our offensive line a little bit. We talked a little bit about what Mitch Morse is going to bring, hopefully at, at the center position competition for sure. But if he starts there, um, uh, I don't see him losing that competition. I don't see him way. losing that competition either, but we'll, we, it is, we'll call it a competition. <laughs> um, Ezra Cleveland got extended. Cam's still here for right now. Walker Little's on the last year of his deal. Um, where do we see the future of the line going? Because that's can be that might be very well be an early draft pick too. Could be, and uh, I think you always consider adding to the people that protect your franchise quarterback. I think that you always have to think about that. It, it's a group that, as a whole, they need to get better, and a lot of people, I think, minimize the re-signing of Ezra Cleveland. But I'm here to tell you that was smart business. I. I was not a fan of last year when you had an injury at left tackle that you put Ezra Cleveland at left tackle going against Miles Garrett and Cleveland. In my opinion, you don't weaken two positions by moving someone over by moving a guy who has a comfort zone and oh by the way he just got to this football team by moving him out. I thought that they should have put in somebody else and then just gave that somebody else some help, and then left Ezra at left guard. Because, you know, I thought Ezra, when he was healthy, was their best offensive lineman last year. And uh, so I, I'm a big fan of them re-signing him, and, and it didn't cost a lot of money. So I thought Especially when good. you see some of these other offensive lineman contracts that were going out after, you feel a little bit better about yeah. Ezra's because they yeah. got that done earlier. Well, and I think the first reportings of Ezra's contract were a little out of whack to what the reality was. And then I really like the signing of, of Mitch Morse to provide competition at center. I mean, clearly last year, uh, the center position did not did not have the, the productivity, the production, whatever you want to say, of where it needed to be. And Mitch Morse will bring in competition. I think he's going to end up being the starter. He's a veteran guy. He's got a little bit more oomph to him. Uh, very good in pass protection uh, and, and moves really well. You know, that's – one of the reasons why, you know, last year when they were struggling a little bit at the center position, and I think Luke can get better, but last year they were struggling at that position. Okay, well, do they have an option? Well, with this offense that the Jaguars have, the center's got to be able to, to move. I mean, they they have an offensive line. Okay, the center's got to be able to move. Mitch Morris can move. He can snap and he can pull. He can get out in space. I mean, so he's a good fit for the scheme. And – I think he's going to be the eventual starter. And the question will be, will, will Luke Fortner upgrade his abilities? Will he get stronger? And then the other question is, will he provide this team with some positional flexibility? Can he play guard? And can he play center? Because, you know, Tyler Shatley's probably going to be retired or, or going somewhere else. So can he be – fill that Tyler Shatley role for this football team going forward. I think that's an interesting question. If we look at some of the young guys on the line, Anton had a great rookie year. I at, love him. At I, right tackle. Do I think he see, should be left tackle. Do you see him at left tackle yeah, in the he's future? he's got the feet. He's got the feet. Excellent pass protection last year. For, I mean, you look at some of the quality of the players that he had to face. I know. <laughs> Especially right out of the gate. Like, it's like Chris Jones came back right in time. Like, to do all that. that. And he did a great job. He's got great feet. I think he's going to get bigger. And remember, let's not forget, he played with a, a hurt shoulder all year. It, from training camp on, yeah. And was wearing what appeared to be like a shoulder harness, which indicates you know something's not right. And he doesn't have all his strength there. In that, and it was his outside arm, his right tackle, so right shoulder. And um, But I think he's a natural left tackle. Just his feet are just so good. He's one of those guys that you could put at left tackle against some of the premium pass rushers and, and have total confidence that you're not going to need to help him. And then, okay, you figure out what you're going to do it right. Okay, you've got some options there. And uh, Cam at right tackle, Walker Little at right tackle, draft pick at right tackle. Draft I mean, pick question mark, yeah. Yeah, you got, you got some options Somebody there. in the mix. All right, stay with us here on Jaguars Happy Hour. We're wrapping things up soon, but first we're going to do some Microsoft social media questions, have some answers for you, so stay with us here on Jaguars Happy Hour.
What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move-in ready homes and step up your game. At Fair and Farrah, we represent people from all walks of life in matters involving personal injury cases. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter which neighborhood you call home, because everyone deserves justice, dignity, and respect. And remember, when it comes to compensation, you only get one shot. Make it count. Call Fair and Farrah at 800-500-5555. Jacksonville. Looking for the best clearance deal of the year on trucks that deliver power, performance, and savings? Then it's time to say yes during Ford Truck Month. Yes to limited time savings on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s. And yes to the number one selling trucks 47 years straight, Ford F-Series. Find all your yeses at the clearance sale during Ford Truck Month, only at your local Ford dealer. Based on 1977 through 2023 CY industry reported sales. Yeah, my mom's coming to pick me up in about 30 minutes. So. <laughs> it's kind of nice when your mom can pick you up from work. So, <laughs> um, But it'll be good. I think, like I said, I'm just looking forward to meeting the guys. and every Mom driving carpool again. Mac Jones got picked up by his mom on press day last week, which is good for him. perfect. Good um, for him. <laughs> back here on Happy Hour, Kainani Stevens filling in for JP. Um, Jeff Lagerman is with me. Uh, we talked a lot about some of these free agents, some of these new faces coming in, um, filling some needs, which is great, and also just bringing competition, which we haven't seen at certain positions. So that's good too. Yeah, and uh, you know, the kicker Joey Sly being brought in and i think that's uh, just the beginning for that position sure I think, there's more to come yeah i think there's more to come and whether that's in free agency or whether that's through a draft pick Late draft yeah i know in, in the last couple of years they had their eyes on a couple of kickers that ended up getting drafted but uh, they ended up missing out um, because the player that they coveted ended up getting picked before their opportunity came so um every position in a perfect world you would like to have the holes plugged and then go into free agency or go into the draft and then be able to get best available player. And then some of the are positions that maybe you don't end up getting what you wanted, free agency is not over. You know, free agency is still going on and then the price tag continues to drop as free agency wears on. So then you start to get some opportunities at players that uh, are bargain, I don't want to say bargain basement price, but on a much more affordable deals. We love a discount. We love a sale. Absolutely. And uh, those are, and a lot of time those, there are some players that fall into that category at that time that are good players, but they just didn't get the long-term contract that they wanted. So 
Now you're talking about getting a player who's highly motivated, who wants a one-year prove-it deal, and I don't think there's anything better than having a player on a one-year prove-it deal because you're going to get his best. Absolute best because they want that money. Yeah, and that's when you get it. I mean, you get those guys a lot of times in that window, which is after the draft. Can't blame them for that. Let's go into some of our social media questions powered by Microsoft. Um, we got some viewers here. Jeff, we got Michael from Orange Park first who says, um, Calvin Ridley says he loves the Jaguars and he wants to come back, but that he signs for an extra $12 million. Where is the loyalty there? <laughs> I think it's guaranteed money It would be the problem, right? Well, I mean, look. You can have half of it guaranteed. Calvin Ridley approaches it as you should and that it's a business. I mean, at the end of the day, the team is running a business to win football games and manage their cap. And, and for the player, you're running a one-person business. And so I don't fault Calvin Ridley for saying all the right things and then leaving to go with the Tennessee Titans. I mean, it's just that's, that's business. I'll never forget when Reggie White had the opportunity to leave the Philadelphia Eagles and arguably one of the greatest players ever and had an opportunity to go play for whoever he wanted to go play for. And he was on a tour and uh, chose the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. And Reggie said that, you know, he prayed hard about it and, and, uh, and he felt that God was guiding him in the direction of the Green Bay Packers, which was great. And as players, you know, because I was playing at the time, we all said, yeah, it was in God we trust. Yes. <laughs> was the directing green. them the towards Green, green was Bay, going this way. which yeah. is on the dollar bill, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's nothing wrong with that. You know, there, and, and with certain players, okay, if the money's close, okay, then you can decide, okay, look, I like the other things better that go along with choosing a club that maybe not be at the top of the money. But the money's got to be close to get to start – to weigh in those other things that could factor in. Yes, money's number one, and that was a huge deal. So that makes sense in terms of that. Mm -hmm. Our second fan question is going to be from Eric from St. Augustine. He says, free agency's over, in his mind at least. It's round one now. Jaguars are on the clock at 17. Who you got? What position is the biggest need? I know we've talked about a couple of different things, but what's the biggest need? Well, as I told you, I'm not going to draft for need, but if I had to draft for need, I mean, right now <laughs> I'm going to draft a corner. Yeah. I mean, because there's a there's definitely a, a hole at that with Darius Williams being gone, and uh, in the National Football League, you really need three. And so you you got Darby, you got Tyson Campbell, and is Darby a premium player? I mean, I don't know if he's a premium player, but he's a solid player. So you need to find you need to find some somebody that has the ability to play some man coverage against a premium player. I think Tyson's a really good player. But I, I wouldn't say that Tyson's a premium player and playing man coverage. I think he's a good player. I think he's more suited to play in zone. But, uh, yeah, I mean, corner, if I had to say right now, based on need. Yep, it's young man's game, so I think that's definitely a viable option. I've been leaning corner the last week or so. I think yeah. that's probably the way they're going to go. And then maybe lineman? I'm not really sure. Yeah. They like big guys. I know Trent Balky likes to get the large, tall – physical specimen so that might be if the there's way to go. a tackle if there's a tackle there that gives you a real really physical player that can take your offensive line to to a different level in physicality that also may give you some flexibility to maybe play Matt guard for a year mm -hmm. then I, I think you got to consider that uh, probably wouldn't be a big fan of drafting wide receiver in round one just because I, I like some of the wide receivers that we currently have. But then again, if Justin Jefferson is on uh, there and available and you're on the clock, you can't turn that down. Is this a deep enough draft where everybody says it's a really good wide receiver draft? Could you get someone later in the fourth that's serviceable? Or is it like, where do you see that? Because they don't have that third anymore that they lost from Calvin. So it's kind of the first two and then a little bit of time until they have another pick is identifying that's going to be hard is that possible at a later pick that's the one thing to be bring up the hole okay yeah and i was hoping that last year when they had all of those picks last year yeah that they would be able to trade some of them to move to this year but they weren't able to do that unfortunately they were not they had so many last year and now it's kind know. of like you wish you had a little this year but We'll see what they can do. We've got a couple more weeks. We're going to dive into this, try to figure out exactly where they're going with the draft, and then they'll probably do something else. But we're going to look into it nonetheless. Jeff Lagerman, Kainani Stevens filling in for JP. JP will be back with you guys on Happy Hour next week. We appreciate you joining us.